Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson, and I'm here to talk about um, kind of those moments where gaming and reading coincide. So because I love historical games, I very frequently end up picking up books about the games that I'm playing, or I'll pick up a game based on a book that I've read. So this time I played a game first and ended up doing some reading. So I, uh, as you might know, love PAX Premier 2nd Edition from Whirly Good Games, designed by Cole Whirly. And I have in the past read Dalrymple's book about the great game in this period in time. And it's, it's a piece of historical work that I really, really enjoyed. But sometimes I just want some light reading. And I was on Barnes and Noble not too long ago, and I ended up picking up Flashman. Um, this is a bit of historical fiction published in 1969, I think the first volume was. Um, but this is just sitting on the shelf in Barnes and Noble. I knew what it was because Flashman got mentioned in the rule book for um, Pax Premier. And I just wanted to know what was inside. And I ended up enjoying it with some caveats. And I think that that's why I felt inspired to make this. So the Flashman series is written by George MacDonald Frazier. And it is about a really just morally reprehensible asshole um, named Flashman, Harry Flashman. And he basically ends up doing things at these momentous times in history. And these events that are a huge deal for the British Empire. But he himself is generally kind of cowardly and useless. Um, I mean, you know, he likes to sleep with multiple women. He's generally a coward. He's not very honest. He really just wants to be lazy and flirt around all the time. And that's all he really wants. Uh, he likes to drink as well. And so he's not a very honorable person. And like, he'll tell you, the book is written from his point of view, that this is the case. He's well aware that he's kind of a turd. Um, uh, and nonetheless, he ends up getting credit for and getting recognition for things that maybe he never did because he's in the right place at the right time all the time. He's also pretty useful to the army because he's great at languages. So, you know, he ends up being all these diplomatically interesting positions because that's his like one actual useful talent in life. So the thing about the Flashman series is that Harry Flashman is supposed to be reprehensible. Um, and that's honestly okay. Like the book is a big rollicking adventure story anyway. And I can absolutely see why it had and continues to have appeal. However, the book also has some extreme drawbacks, I think, unless you know for sure what you're getting into when you start it and that you're okay with it. So we're talking just incredibly distracting for me, racist language, because he uses the N-word to refer to people in India, basically anybody who's not a European. And it's constant. It's like multiple times a page. It's extremely dismissive and gross. It's the sort of thing that like, I'm honestly surprised it was published in 1969. Like I get that it's historical fiction and that it's about a period, um, you know, it's about the first volume happens in about 1842. Um, so I, I get that it's meant to reflect a historical period where people probably really did talk like that. But I'm stunned that in 1969 people still wanted to read that because I guess times have really changed and maybe for the better. Um, and now I really think that most people with modern sensibilities would not love the language. And I'm not saying that you should never read it or that it's bad because I enjoyed it and I might actually read another Flashman book. At the same time, uh, it really led to some questions for me about like what needs to go into historical fiction to get the point across because Flashman was so gross that it was just gross as a, as a reading experience. Um, there is also massive content warning everybody for sexual assault. Um, there's a scene in the first book where he, uh, he rapes a woman and he doesn't feel bad about it at all. He's like, yeah, I had to do it. Cause she had attitude. And, um, he then goes on to say that like, well, I can see why people would enjoy that. But like, I generally prefer willing partners. And I'm just like, ew, <laughs> this is so disgusting. <laughs> and I, and, you know, I wasn't super disturbed by it. It didn't bother me all day as reading content. At the same time, I did feel gross while I was reading it. It made me feel differently about the book. And it also really made me think multiple times about whether I would ever recommend this to another person. Basically, I would never just tell somebody I didn't know really well that they should go read Flashman because really there's stuff in it that I don't, I don't, I really don't know how an average person would respond. And I'm assuming pretty negatively, actually. That said, the book is interesting. It's about a really interesting time in history. The way the historical figures are depicted in the book is really interesting. And, you know, I really did enjoy reading it. 
you know, George McDonald Frazier has a really good sense of adventure and of pacing and of silliness. And, you know, there are a lot of things about the book that make me understand completely why it ended up being a huge series and why Flashman ended up being really popular. So in many ways, it doesn't surprise me at all that it was successful, that people still talk about it. At the same time, you know, would I put this on a classroom shelf with no warning for kids? No, I don't think I would show this to high schoolers at all. Um, I would absolutely assign something like this to college kids because I sort of feel like at that point you are old enough, but I would put warnings on it. And then for just pleasure reading, you know, the thing that really tickled me was that I just picked this up on the shelf at Barnes & Noble. I didn't fully know what it was. I assumed I was going to run into some kind of imperialist perspectives. But the back of the book just says... Meet Harry Flashman in the wildly funny and historically accurate cult classic that introduced us to history's greatest adventurer, randiest cad, and most incorrigible scoundrel. Flashman follows Flashy as he lies, steals, duels, and winches his way from 1839 England to India to the wilds of Afghanistan. Along the way, he survives military incompetence, ambushes, torture, venomous snakes, and vengeful women, and emerges against all odds as a bona fide hero of the realm. And it says, like, oh, splendidly entertaining from Times Magazine. And so it's just presented as kind of like a normal book, but I kind of feel like the content of the book has aged enough that it's no longer just a normal thing that a normal person would just pick up and then have a normal reading experience. And that is like really interesting to me. It doesn't mean the book shouldn't be sold. Uh, it doesn't mean they shouldn't read it. I actually never think that basically. Um, but it does mean that the marketing is a little weird. <laughs> and so I went around thinking like, okay, you know, what would be a uh, counterpart to this that I think is a bit more palatable, but still has like that same adventure fun vibe and is still historically accurate. And I think maybe the answer to that is something like Bernard Cornwell's Sharp series. So I have recently read the first two books and I'm about halfway through the third of the Sharp series. So I read Sharp's Tiger and I read Sharp's Triumph. And you know, these aren't the first written, they're just like the first in Sharp's career. So I think Sharp's Tiger was actually written pretty recently. But I really enjoyed those books a lot. And Sharp is, you know, so the Flashman, the first Flashman book covers like the events of 1842's like miserable British retreat from Afghanistan, which is why it got mentioned in the PAX Premier game book. Um, then, you know, Sharp's career is happening a bit earlier, so his first adventure takes place in about 1799, but it's still Brits in India, other Europeans in India, different powers fighting for control. And so you get some of the same vibe and some of the same attitudes, but the way they're presented in Cornwall's book is just really different. Um, the language is a lot more respectful. Like, are people presented as racist in the book? Yes, absolutely. Are soldiers presented as, you know, men who purchase prostitutes and do really bad things and drink too much and all. Yeah, absolutely. Like it's basically what you would expect from of an army that's like looting, conquering, and also doesn't respect the people that they are conquering. Um, you know, there are different, there are definitely reflections of status differences between officers. So issues of money and privilege and also differences between European people and people who are from India and who have been brought on board in various armies. So I would say that Cornwell's work is still in that realm of like, yes, this is historical fiction. It is fun. It still presents a lot of historical accuracies, but it's also a lot more palatable to read. And I just think that there are some interesting questions to kind of approach with that. And like this video is not meant to answer everything. It's just kind of me thinking about this because I want you to think about it with me too. So I guess it leads to the question of when you're doing historical fiction, how historically accurate should it be? And then where do you align things to meet modern sensibilities? Because I think that this is a situation where, you know, I haven't read a lot of fiction from the actual period where Flashman is set, but I do know it's an alleged like sequel to a book from like eight, the 1800s. And so I would be really interested to maybe read a around a little bit in some of the actual period documents where Flashman set and see if people did talk like this um, and how much of that is, you know, attempt at historical accuracy versus modern interpretation of that setting. So I'd want to know that. And then I guess the question is, even if it is like perfectly historically accurate, and I'm sure there is a lot of realism in there in terms of how British people saw the Indian people that they conquered and mistreated um, of the British Empire, you know, how much of that needs to make it 
into a modern novel that is set in a historical period. At what point is historical accuracy actually not something that you need to fully have in a novel that's meant to be entertainment? And like, I wonder about these things a lot as somebody who studies Rome. Um, you know, it's really easy to kind of focus on the aspects of the Roman Empire that we like, or just a lot over the stuff that we don't like. It's not totally clear to us. Like we don't have enough colloquial language to be sure how Romans all spoke to each other. And so, you know, we're working with limited information and we're doing our best. We can get a sense of like Roman cultural attitudes. I think with these books, it's kind of a similar situation of like, well, except maybe we have more material in a lot of ways. Um, but it makes me wonder like, okay, how accurate does the language need to be? Should you have somebody speaking in relatively modern language, but reflecting ancient attitudes in your historical fiction? Um, to what amount of accuracy does historical fiction owe to its source material and how much authorial interpretation and modernization should be there for it to be an interesting and entertaining book that's still informative? And then what do you lose when you make either of those decisions? So I don't really know the answer to that, but it's something that I'm thinking about right now. And it's also something that I think about when it comes to games about history. Um, I know that, you know, for example, reacting to the past games deal with historical periods where people said and argued some really disturbing stuff. Uh, but there are ways to acknowledge that in the classroom while also not making students actually make gross historical arguments that are offensive to themselves and their classmates. And so I wonder if historical fiction, people who are writing it, you know, are they treading those same lines? Um, and I would be really interested to see more discussions of that. And I might start some here. Um, you know, I know this is a board game channel, but I read these books because I like to play the board games about these historical periods. Um, and also, you know, it doesn't, it's called Beyond Solitaire. There are a lot of things that you can do by yourself, such as read a book. So, uh, that's all for now. I'm going to end rant here. But if you have any thoughts on this issue, I would actually be really interested to hear what you think. Um, I think it's worth discussing, like, what are we talking about when we talk about history? And then what are we doing when we write historical fiction? So thanks so much for watching. Um, please like, subscribe, comment, and most of all, happy reading, gaming, all of it. Go do it all. Have a good day, guys.